In this Learn Electrics video, we will look at the measurement of ZDB, this mystery symbol that pops up on the schedule of test results. A recent question asked us, why do some certificates ask for ZD and some ask for ZDB? There must be a reason for this, but I can't find out. Is there a logical explanation? And if so, what is it? Let's look at this in steps. Looking at page 2 of an EICR, for instance, page 520 in the Wiring Regs book, we can see that the information requested is for ZE. But when we fill in the schedule of test results, as found on page 531 of the regs, ZE has suddenly changed to ZDB. Why? What is it? What's happened? Building the picture up in steps then, we have here a simple drawing of a typical domestic installation. We have a supply into the property with a cutout box or main fuse and a meter. Then we have the consumer unit and keeping it simple, just a single socket circuit is shown. But this could be any circuit, lighting, shower and so on. We have the source or intake position where the supply comes into the property and then the main switch in the consumer unit, the place at which we will measure the earth fault loop impedance or ZE. A collection of circuit breakers is next and then out to the point of use on the radial socket circuit wiring in this case. You will be familiar with this formula, but let's have a recap. ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. ZS is the impedance or resistance of the whole socket circuit. It is a measurement from the point of use out of the property to the supply transformer and back. We call this the earth fault loop impedance. ZE is the impedance of the outside wiring and there is only one outside wiring for any installation so there can only be one ZE. All the circuits share the same ZE. R1 plus R2 is the effective resistance of the internal circuit wiring. It's a dead test resistance from the consumer unit to the point of use. Each circuit in the property will have its own R1 plus R2. There can be lots of circuits, so there can be lots of R1 plus R2 readings and an equal number of ZS measurements. This slide shows this. ZE is the outside world where the supply comes in. Added to this is R1 plus R2 for each circuit, the inside world, and we call this a final circuit. And altogether, this makes up ZS, the whole thing. Think of the final circuit as the final length of cable from the consumer unit to the point of use, the final stage of the electricity's long journey from the power station to the point of use. Notice that with the final circuit, there are no more circuit breakers or fuses to go through and we don't count BS1362 plug top fuses or FCU fuses. Now we can add a second consumer unit, which we've called CU2. This is supplied by a suitable cable from the circuit breaker in CU1, the consumer unit at the source of the installation. The cable between the two consumer units is called a distribution circuit. On this slide, we are showing a final circuit and a distribution circuit both coming from the same consumer unit and both with their own R1 plus R2. The distribution circuit is distributing electricity to another consumer unit and not to a point of use. A distribution circuit will have another set of fuses or circuit breakers to go through. Look at the ZS measurements next. We have a ZE for the supply, measured at the main switch of CU1. Each of the two circuits has an R1 plus R2 value that can be measured. At the end of each of the circuit cables, we can measure or calculate a ZS. We can measure ZS at the socket for the final circuit. And we can measure ZS at the main switch of CU2 for the distribution circuit. This information will be recorded on the schedule of test results in the correct row for each circuit. Now let's add a new circuit to CU2. This is going to a point of use, so it is a final circuit and it will have its own R1 plus R2 measurement. We need to enter this data onto the schedule of test results for CU2. But what about ZS? Where do we get the numbers from now? What do we write down? ZS is ZE plus R1 plus R2. But now we have two circuit cables, each 
with their own resistance value. ZE is way back at the incoming position at the main switch of CU1. So the main switch of CU2 cannot be ZE as well. And ZS is used for the end of the circuit. And CU2 is in the middle of two circuit cables. So what can we do? We call it ZDB. Z at this DB. Z at this distribution board. And now our circuit labels look like this. We have a ZE at the incoming position and a ZS for the socket circuit. We have a distribution circuit that goes to CU2 and we call this ZDB. CU2 has final circuits with their own R1 plus R2. So ZS for these final circuits will be made up of ZDB plus the R1 plus R2 that comes after the ZDB. A recap on this. ZE is the earth fault loop impedance measured at the first consumer unit. ZDB is the earth fault loop impedance measured at any consumer unit. So ZDB can also be used on certificates for the first consumer unit. Any consumer unit can have a ZDB measurement, but only the first consumer unit can call it ZE. ZDB just means the earth fault loop impedance measured at the main switch of this consumer unit. There is only one ZE for an installation, the point at which the supply enters the installation, but there can be as many ZDBs as needed. It's the same measurement, the same point on each consumer unit, it's just the name that we call it that has changed. All that ZDB means is the Z or impedance measurement at this particular distribution board, ZDB. In relation to CU1 certificates and test schedule, what have we got here? We have a consumer unit with the incoming supply going to it. We measure the earth fault loop impedance at the main switch and this is ZE. It is entered as ZE on the certificate supply details and as ZDB on the schedule of test results. CU2 and CU3 will have the loop impedance measured at their own main switches and these will be recorded as ZS values on CU1's schedule of test results. This slide shows this in very simple blocks. Just for CU1, we will record the ZE measurement, and for CU2, we measure and record a ZS. Forget the socket that comes off CU2 for now, that is nothing to do with CU1 paperwork. In relation to CU2 and CU3, how do we enter the data? We will look at CU2 and CU3 will be just the same. We had a ZS value for CU2 on the previous slides. This ZS will be entered as a ZDB on the top of CU2's schedule of test results. The socket circuits coming from CU2 will all have their own R1 plus R2. Together with the ZDB, this will make the ZS for each socket circuit entered under measured ZS. Just keep track of which paperwork you are entering the data on. Be methodical. If this is CU1's paperwork, we will record CU2 as a measured ZS. If it is CU2's paperwork, then the same number is now a ZDB at the top of the test results page. Looking at a simplified view of CU2 now, and CU3 will be the same, CU1 is still ZE, the only ZE and this will be the intake or supply ZE on CU2 paperwork. We put ZDB on the CU2 schedule of test results, and ZS for the socket that is on CU2. This ZS is ZDB plus R1 plus R2. This is the sequence that you should follow. Starting with the EICR or EIC for consumer unit 1 at the top left, Enter the measured ZE at the main switch for CU1, 0 0.15 ohms in this case. This can then be written on the schedule of test results for CU1 as 0 0.15 for ZDB. It's only a name. Now add the ZE or ZDB to the measured R1 plus R2. 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.25 ohms for CU2 ZS. Then, on consumer unit number 2, test results page, write in 0 0.25 ohms for ZDB. That's it. It's no more difficult than that. 
Hopefully, you now know why we call it ZDB. You know how to calculate ZDB, and you know what figures to put on the certificates and schedules. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Hopefully, it's helped in a small way to clear up what can be a confusing situation for many. Watch the video again. By repeating your viewing, you will help to reinforce things in your mind and make things clearer. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.